Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As you can see, we're jumping right in and let's start waking up. I'm going to start from both directions. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm wiggling my fingers and I'm moving them around my head. At the same time, I'm moving my toes. So I'm moving the toes and sometimes I rock back on the heels and wiggle the toes and I rock and I go on releve and rock back and releve. And at the same time, I'm massaging my head and getting some energy moving from both directions. So rocking back, wiggle the toes, rock forward onto the toes, rock back, wiggle the toes, rock forward onto the toes. If you feel like your scalp is revitalized, you can start moving your upper body. So my hands are moving, my wrists are moving, my shoulders are moving, and I'm moving in proportion to my lower body. So my ankles are moving, and they already got a little bit of a warm up with the rock back and toe wiggle. My ankles are moving. I'm gonna fold over my toes, giving full, full expression of the ankle in the pointed position and feeling that stretch over the top of my feet. Gonna move the wrists around. So essentially, if I go like this with my hands, so if I'm moving my wrists, I'm, I'm circling my hand at the wrist joint while moving the toes, while moving my energy, my weight over the toes and pushing into my ankle, giving it the chance to fully express itself. I can do the same thing with my hands. So I'm going to take my right hand, put your right hand out, and I'm going to protectively fold my left hand over my right and push my right wrist towards, well, away from my shoulder while keeping my shoulder in its socket. So shoulders down, pushing that wrist forward as I push my right ankle, push in, pushing into my right ankle. And now I'll bring it all back and let's take the reverse. So we're gonna flip the hand around. I'm gonna push my right wrist forward but now my fingertips are pointing towards the ground. My shoulder is still in its socket and I'm going to feel the flex on that wrist. And to get the same feeling in my foot, I'm going to plie onto, bend my knee over my toes onto that right foot using the left as a support. So I can really push into that. Okay, let's do it one more time. We're going to Bring the fingers down towards the ground. The back of the hand is pointing away from the heart. And we're going to push, bring the heel, the right foot up and push into that right ankle and push into that right wrist so that the wrist is pushing away from the shoulder while the shoulder is pushing into its socket, creating a beautiful tension without straightening that arm. We don't need to straighten that arm and lock it. We're just making that tension, strengthening and stretching at the same time. Let's do it on the other side. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. And let's grab that right, that left wrist, that the left fingers and push that left wrist away away from the shoulder tip, keeping the shoulder tip locked, pushing it into its socket and doing the same thing with our feet. So going, working through the foot, pushing up and over the toes and moving that weight over that heel so that it gives the foot the chance to really express itself. The ankle gets to feel that stretch on the top of the foot and down and now let's take the other way so i'm going to flip my hand so that my palm is facing the sky and i'm going to push into and feel the flex of that left wrist at the same time i'm going to flex 
my left foot, the, the back of my left heel, that Achilles tendon, I'm gonna stretch that by essentially flexing that foot with the ground and using my right foot to support myself. Flex, flex, flex. Ooh, that feels really good. <sighs> I'm a lefty, so I really need the stretch. Let's do it one more time. Pushing up and over into that heel and pushing into that, pushing the, into that left wrist so that it is pushing forward while creating that tension so that the left shoulder is pushing into the shoulder socket. And then take the flex, pushing by plieing. The left knee is going to push over, is going to bend over the left foot, and we'll use the right as the anchor. Okay, now we're in the shoulders, which matches the knees, and now everything is going to center at our center. <laughs> so both hands on the hips, and we're going to push forward, and then to the side, and then to the back, knees are bent, and then to the side, and then forward again, other direction to the side, back to the side, forward. And now let's smooth out that rotation. If you're a horseback rider, you're probably very good at this. Smoothing out that rotation, other direction, smooth rotation. Knees are lightly bent. Great. And now let's take that small movement and let's let it move through the entire body. So we're going to move our pelvis forward and then to the side and then backwards and then to the side. Do it again. Same direction forward, feeling that even more into each side, that side back side one more time forward even be in a semi back bend side back side other direction forward oh side back side there's no denying that the body's warming up so you're going to go deeper on this side by default, back, side, and one more, forward, side, back, side. Okay, bring both feet together, pushing into the balls of the feet. If you need help pushing into the balls of the feet, lift the toes, pushing into the heels so that you get to feel this beautiful arch, this arch between your toes and your heels. You're pushing into that. The more you push into the bases of that arch, the more beautifully you make this amazing triangle with those, with the top of the foot being the apex of the triangle and the uh, toe pads, the uh, pads of the foot being the front of the triangle and the heels being the back of the triangle. And now we're going to push down to go up and we're going to bring our hands into steeple grip you cannot see them on the screen, steeple grip. So two fingers point up, the other hands fold around, the thumbs fold over each other. And we're going to push down and feel that straight. And now we're gonna do the very same thing that we just did. So you're gonna push down to go up, feeling that tension the same way that we push the shoulder tip into its socket so that we could stretch the wrist, give the wrist the greatest amount of stretch give the arm the greatest amount of stretch through tension. We're giving this all to our body. So we're pushing down into our feet. We're pushing up into the sky, creating tension with our entire body. And now we're gonna do a big giant, a big giant circle, just like we've been doing, but with more intention. So we're pushing down to go up and we're gonna start backwards and you're gonna go towards the sky. You're not going to want to work on the bend as much as we've been doing. You want to really push down and give yourself the opportunity of a supported back bend. A supported back bend. So you may not go as far. If you look at the screen, my focus is not on this. 
it's not on bending, it's actually on pushing down to go up and reaching over as if you were going to curl over a ball. Down and out, 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 out. Down, push down. Inhale to bring your body back to center. And now let's go forward, forward, forward. We're going to really need to use our abs to create control and stability. As we fold forward, you can let your toes relax, but you can give yourself a stronger base as you fold forward. Really emphasizing that center to create stability. So feeling a nice little tension in the center. And you may be warm enough to touch the ground, but wherever you are, thighs support your belly so i'm not there yet so i'm going to bend my knees so that my thighs can support my belly and i can let my hands go on the ground and now i'm going to shake my head yes shake my head no yes no really good push back into the feet Bring the hands back to the steeple grip. Do me a favor, and whatever thumb you had on top, flip it. That's yoga of the hands. That means the steeple grip is going to be affected a little bit. And now we're going to push into the feet, rooting to rise. We're going to rise with a flat back. We're not going to rise by rolling through our spine. We're going to rise with a flat back, which means you're going to push down with the feet and push down with the hands. Both both ends of your body are emphasized. Use that energy and intentional attention to the ends of your body to create stability as you rise with a flat back and eventually make your way back to, to neutral, shoulders down, rooting to rise and feeling that tension. And now let's work sideways. So we're going to root to rise. We're going to push up and we're going to push over, over, over. Now this is really tricky. So I'm gonna take this slow. So of course, all of this goes back to what we were doing, okay? So we're essentially doing this still, but we're doing it in a very, very slow way so that you can get the most out of each side of these of this circle that you're making. So we're going to root to rise. And what we're gonna do to really keep this, this really nice controlled line with our body is we're actually going to, as if there is a pane of glass on the front of us and the back of us so that we can't move. And in order to give ourselves space to lean to the side, what we're gonna have to do is actually push forward with our hips, get a slight bend in your knees, and then move to the side as needed. So there's like this extra space that's available to us if we want to do this side bend. If we try to do it without making that space, we'll end up like this we want. We want to actually tuck forward and then push into the side. I don't want to do that. So scratch this part, take this part out. So now let's go up and let's do our side, our side crescent. So what we're going to do are, you know, take this part out too. Now let's go up, rooting to rise, steeple grip. I hope that you have alternated your grip again if you haven't go ahead so you'll be on the side that you started and we're going to push up and then we're going to move over the same way that we bent our body over that ball backwards we're going to with control bend our body shoulders down shoulders away from the ears over that ball in a controlled way inhale exhale Inhale, stretch towards that point. Exhale, inhale, 
back to center. Let's take the other side, change the grip, plie over your feet in the sixth position. Rooting to rise up and over. Let's take that other side bend. Inhale. Pushing through both ends of your body. So I'm pushing through my feet and through my arms. Exhale. Relax into the pose. Inhale. Reaching, reaching, reaching. Exhale, relax. Inhale. Back to center. Hands coming to prayer. Hands in the chest in prayer. Hands at the heart. That fourth chakra, that beautiful green light shining. Let's inhale. Exhale. Hands come to either side. Inhale. Hands come up overhead, rooting to rise. Hands meet in prayer overhead. Slight back bend. Exhale. Fold forward. Hands moving through prayer, letting your body move over your legs. Exhale, inhale, flat back, supporting your upper body by pushing your hands against your shins. Exhale, fold back forward. Inhale, bring both hands down to in front of and on either side of your feet. And let's just walk back to plank. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, let's move, just move, shift all of your weight to your right hand. Make sure that you're using that grip that I love so much, where you've got a right angle formed with your thumb and forefinger. You're gripping so that you're protecting your wrist. And now you're just going to flip your body so that your heart is facing the long side of the mat and your the knife's edge of your right foot is on the ground. And you can even flatten the whole right foot if you want so that it's on the ground. You can also bring both feet down on either side because we're going in the side plank. Hands on the hip. You can also support yourself by bringing the right knee to the ground and having a supported side plank. But wherever you are, let's just take one breath here. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Come back to forward plank and let's take the other side inhale flipping over to the nice edge of your left foot on the ground and you can have both feet on the ground or you can support the left side whatever you want inhale exhale pay attention to those shoulders inhale exhale coming back to forward plank and now let's go to back plank. So we're going to just flip our body over. We bring our right hand to meet our left hand. We bring our left side up and over and then just walk ourselves backwards to tabletop. Walking ourselves backwards, our shoulders are down, our gaze is over our knees, looking at the short side of the mat. And now we're just going to walk our feet forward. Make sure you've got that activated grip to protect your wrist. And let's make a flat plane with our upper body. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Let's move back to first table <laughs> and then back to forward plank. And down to Chaturanga. Exhale. Inhale. Upward facing dog. Exhale. Downward facing dog. Inhale. Right heel comes to the sky. Hips stay squared to the mat. Exhale. Right knee pierces through the center of the mat, moving through the down the mat towards your hands and flat and planting that right foot on the ground. Hips are square. Let's keep them square. Let's emphasize the squareness by putting our hands on our hips to keep that squareness. Rising with a flat back to Anjane Asana, modified. Hands are staying on the hips. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, two hands come up overhead. Slight back bend, exhale, hands come to prayer. Inhale, let's take a twist. So we're going to just 
extend our upper body forward, extend our hands forward, move our left forearm to kiss our the right side of our right thigh. And from there, bend the hands into prayer and pushing into that right thigh creates a twist that allows us to really dig into this Anjane Asana, this twisted Anjane Asana. You're welcome to open your hands to take it even farther and bring it all onto your right foot, which I'm not gonna do, or to stay here, gaze toward the ground, gazes towards the wall, gazes towards the sky. Inhale here, exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale. Exhale, on twist, bring it all to warrior two. Expanding that pose as much as you need. Trying to keep a right angle with that right knee. Knife's edge of the left foot is parallel to the back of the mouth. Inhale, exhale, expand into the pose. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, stay in reverse warrior. Inhale, stretch, 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 stretch. Exhale, inhale, unfold back to warrior two. Exhale, inhale, starfish. Exhale, sun god, palms face out. Inhale, heels rise up. Exhale, heels rise down. Inhale, heels rise up. Exhale, heels rise down. Inhale, starfish. Exhale, bring going to warrior two on the left side now. Expand, expand whatever it takes to get that right angle. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Reverse warrior. Exhale. It's so important to keep that right angle right now. You want to keep like a, as if somebody was sitting on your, on your left thigh. You want to keep that kind of connection so that by grounding down into that flatness of this left thigh, you actually create a hook so that you stretch in your reverse warrior. You're actually, you're finding more stretch by rooting down through that left hip bone. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, unfold to warrior two. Inhale, you're going to bring both arms up overhead on Jane Asana, which means you're also gonna rotate your thighs to square towards the front of the mat. Inhale, exhale, hands to prayer. Inhale, hand, the tips of your fingers are going to push out over your knee towards the short side of the mat. And you're gonna take that twist that you took on the other side. But this time we're just doing it all on the left side. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Keep hands in prayer. Exhale. Anjaneyasana. Inhale. Bring hands on either side of that left foot. And you're going to kick up the left foot so that now the knee is pointing towards the front side of the mat. And exhale. Push back and bring that left heel up to the sky. Exhale, bring the left foot down to meet and down with facing dog. Inhale, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. <laughs> Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, poise to pounce. Bringing the knees back, you're going to poise, and you're going to hop, bringing both feet to meet the hands. Exhale. Inhale, pushing to flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rooting to rise. Coming to the center of your mat. Exhale. Hands to prayer. Inhale, let your body move down, down, down to the ground. Exhale. Seated pose. Inhale, two hands come to heart. Exhale, inhale, 
putting both hands on either side of your body. We're just going to do a slight roll and look at how much, feel how much space we've created today. A slight roll in one direction. Inhale, exhale, roll the other direction. Oh. Inhale, roll the other direction, going even more deeply. Feel what you created today. Exhale, roll the other direction. Mm. Coming back to center, hands in prayer. We're going to finish with Om. Um. We're going to acknowledge the four parts that make up our whole being. The intuitive body, the physical body, the emotional body coming from the left the mental body coming from the right. And when we do this om, um, we're going to let it be the gate, the portal through which the spaces that we opened up can receive the different nudgings, utterances, stimuli that are received by these four different bodies. And we're gonna let them percolate in the space that we've created in our body. We're gonna let them root and reveal themselves. We're gonna let them bloom as inner knowings, as inner discoveries, as better ways to engage with our lives so that moment by moment, luscious breath by luscious breath, we are showing up in our presence, in our full presence. We're changing the world with that one intention to show up in our wholeness, to allow ourselves to be and allow the world to witness the majesty of us. Inhale. Oh. Wishing you joy, ease, space, and grace. Namaste.